Good evening, I'm Zarek Anat. Welcome to the studio. And in a pet program tonight. <laughs> Sorry, I almost can't resist it. Um, I don't quite know why, it's just uh, it's typical to the introduction. Well, today has kind of been an exciting day, but I can't tell you why. You've got hair in your eye. There we go. Maybe we'll be able to tell you next week. But we're not there yet. I actually hope I can tell you next week. It would be really good if I could, but we shall have to wait and see. And Francis, I think that wouldn't necessarily achieve. No matter. Okay. So, new night, new colour, new number. The number five. Five is alive. That's a film, by the way. About a robot coming to life. So weather here, given that we're in the UK, got to talk about weather, has been interesting. Had snow today, started off snowing quite a lot, ended up raining quite a lot and the snow has disappeared. It's made things somewhat muddy I guess. As I mentioned earlier, it's been quite an exciting sort of day here. I just can't tell you why. Not yet. Hope I'm able to do so, but it's, it's been a significant day. And not only that, I had a nice tea tonight. Sirloin steak in peppercorn sauce. Which was really nice, the steak was nice, cooked beautifully, and the sauce was lovely. If I do say so myself, although I didn't exactly make it, I sort of, I did cook it, but I didn't make the sauce. So yesterday, as mentioned before, which is why I wasn't streaming, was my birthday. It was a nice relaxing sort of day. Given circumstances, I didn't do very much, um, but we did uh, We did take Lady Zara to the hospital. That, that was just for a routine appointment, shall we say. Just a, a check up on things. So I did spend half of my birthday, I guess you could say, in a hospital. <laughs> well, that's better than um, as they used to do, but we quite regularly spend uh, half of Christmas uh, holiday in a uh, hospital. I have ended up there a few times, coming up to Christmas. Never over Christmas, I'm glad to say, but uh, coming up to Christmas. So 
so as it has been quite a busy day this is uh, a nice relaxing sort of evening stream so sit back enjoy the picture of the tiger and feel free to ask questions if you want to or talk politely in stream in channel in chat get the word out eventually <laughs> Thanks, Wolfie, for the <laughs> for the host. Hi, how are you? How have you been today? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Go enjoy your shower. Now, if that was me, I'd say catch you in five minutes. But uh, you may take longer. <laughs> Actually, you may take as long as you like. <laughs> I just always have very quick showers. Same when I wash my hair. It takes me about two minutes. And by the time I finish, my hair is virtually dry. And those ladies there were so because she's got long hair. And those take several hours to dry. Mine's dry by the time I finish toweling it. Short hair does have some advantages. <laughs> Right, I'm going to finish my tea off tonight because I haven't had a lot to drink today. Well, no, I've not had a lot to drink today. I have had um, half a bottle of champagne about two hours ago now, but um, I've had about half a glass of fizzy water and this tea, and that's it, apart from the champagne. Champagne was just because we didn't have it yesterday. So, kind of just for my um, for my birthday. Actually, it wasn't champagne either. It's it's a fizzy wine. But that's mainly because you're not allowed to call fizzy wine champagne unless it's actually made in the Champagne region of France. You know that. If you didn't, you do now. That's a limitation. Everywhere else, it's got to, it gets has to get called other things. But it cannot be called champagne. It may be the identical, the same thing, but. Funnily enough, it doesn't. Well, it hasn't affected me. I was about to say, what's a, a reasonable quantity, but what's a reasonable quantity? I don't know. Um, but I don't generally find that uh, with sort of two or three glasses of things like fizzy wine, or even wine, I don't particularly feel much of an effect. This is where I simulate being completely drunk, but I'm not going to bother, there's no point, because I'm not. And I'm not very good at simulating it either. But something like a glass, a large-ish glass, so a glass of a, a Vuzo would be about shot glass, little tiny things, but a, sort of fairly double that size. Yeah, I, I won't say a kilo, but I don't, but I can certainly feel the effects of it. Kind of weird. 
because today I haven't had a lot to eat and yet the um, champagne didn't affect me. Of course it's never a good idea to overdrink and I don't because I get migraines and sort of drinking alcohol until you get a hangover. Don't see the fun in that because that's kind of inducing a migraine and I can get those without spending the money anyway so yeah but no drinking to excess never a good idea it's not a, nothing nothing to be proud of or otherwise is, uh, is that and, and I don't yeah I certainly for example the two glasses of champagne almost certainly fizzy wine uh, would have taken me over the drink driving limit in the UK and I won't be driving I don't do that do not drink and drive at all ever full stop nothing not even shandy not even a small glass of anything not even what's the limit how do I stay under it nothing so if I go out and I'm driving um, I drink lemonade done that for as long as I had my license and I haven't and I got my license when I was 17 and I've never lost it and I've never had any points on it absolutely no no point in it um, drinking and driving that is and if you want to drink get someone else to do the driving whether that's a taxi a bus a train a friend partner doesn't matter somebody else and I've stuck to that for a long time now. So yes, I am quite happy to go into a pub and order a pint glass of lemonade, which is usually more expensive than the beer. Which is annoying a little bit, because it's concentrate, carbon dioxide and tap water, well, filtered tap water. And it's more expensive than the beer, but you never know. Okay, some funny looks when you go in and ask for a pint of lemonade, but I uh, hope so. What? I'm not. I'm not uh, going to uh, take that risk, especially when you're piloting, you know, a ton of um, a ton of metal. So, highly recommended if you're driving, do not drink. Don't even, even in the countries which allow you to have a little bit of blood alcohol, don't. Just not worth it. It really isn't. So now that we've got that joyous subject, <laughs> actually it's a good thing to talk about in a way, isn't it? You know, the, about how it's a, how it's a bad idea and how, what you know, people should frown upon it. It should become socially unacceptable. Like, to some extent, I guess, just like smoking is done these days. Smoking is now something that uh, is looked down upon in places. People light cigarettes up, you know. They're outside, round corners. Which I'm quite pleased about in a way, because I'm semi-allergic, I'm less allergic now than I used to be, but I used to be allergic to cigarette smoke. 
and uh, I would get my eyes would go, I wouldn't be able to see properly, I'd start to feel sick and um, things like that, get migraine from it. Now whether that was a direct effect or not, I don't know, but uh, kind of, uh, I would find it difficult sometimes to go into uh, to bars and things like that just because of the smoke that was in there. And back then, a long time ago, um, so one of the hobbies that I used to do was flying the model aircraft. The model club met in a pub, in a public house. Which made it quite difficult at times to go in. Of course now, they're effectively smoke free places, which is kind of fantastic. I just don't want to visit them anymore. Although one of these days I may well go back to both, uh, both Model Club and the Radio Club, although that one that I used to go to was closed. The Model Club is still around. It's a kind of... Uh, no, I mean I fly the helicopters and I like, I like hovering cars, they, um, which I've got enough space here to do. But one of the things that I guess it's a different model club. One of the things I quite like to be able to do is is go back to flying the model gliders, the slope soaring gliders. That would involve joining a club, probably one at a distance because the uh, there aren't too many suitable hills around here. Some very big ones, some very nice ones, but they're coated, coated covered with trees. Trees to the airflow, so they're not really good for uh, the slope soaring with gliders. Now this bit of tag is going to be fun. My eyes are tired, so I'm not actually seeing these numbers greatly very well. But five and six look really similar. And there's a lot of six here and there's just odd fives dotted around in this area. So one of the things I have sort of have been thinking about was uh, I've got a couple of simulator packages for model remote control model flying. One for the helicopter and planes and one for the glider. I'm kind of thinking about streaming some of those occasionally. Relatively easy to do and something completely different that's not, as far as I know, hasn't been seen on Twitch. Now that might be an interesting experiment, and I'll bet Twitch doesn't have a <laughs> doesn't have a game title for either of them. I'll probably have to charge the transmitter up though. It's had a, it's what, been about a year now since it had a last maintenance charge, so the battery should still be okay, but. You could do with being, being brought up to full charge. This year I do intend to fly the helicopters out in the garden and to run the model truck and maybe even the six wheel table. I used to, in summer, used to quite enjoy uh, flying one of them at lunchtime. So, stop work, lunchtime, go outside, fly a heli well, fly one of the helicopters for the length of a battery and then have my lunch and then go back to work. Ish. So, yeah. Big helicopter. I say big, it's not, not actually that big. It just feels big. 
450 millimeter diameter rotor. So actually it's not that big. There are ones which are bigger than that, lots bigger than that, but um, this one felt feels big enough. Uh, that one takes that one runs for about six seven minutes on a battery pack, which is um, I'd say it's quite a sizable battery pack. It is in a way for the models, not sort of compared with the well. Mm, I'd say not sort of compared with your car battery, but actually it possibly isn't too far off um, because they're lithium ion cells so they um, store a heck of a lot of charge. Uh, but my favourite helico helicopter helicopter for flying is the uh, T-Rex 250 I've got. You get smaller ones now. Might have a go at one of those, but I've got a 250 which I really enjoy flying. It's a nice little helicopter to fly. Um, and I, I sort of fly it just hovering. I don't do any aerobatics with them. They are fully aerobatic capable, I just don't do it. Actually, yeah, after all this time, I still haven't learned how to fly nosing uh, to me, which is a, um, I really ought to knuckle down and learn, but kind of just enjoy flying so no, I haven't done that yet. The quad captor though that flies for about 20 minutes. Uh, at least 20 minutes I can't remember now I've got the timers on the transmitter so it, uh, it gives me warning when the batteries are getting low. Um, but uh, that's an interesting one to, to fly just because it is such a nice stable platform. It's, it's not, flying it, it kind of reminds me of when I mentioned before about scuba diving, where the fish would just come floating past your face. You can't see the water as such, so the fish is just suspended in mid-air uh, with no visible means of support. And the quadcopter is kind of the same. And I can just, uh, if it's a calm day, I can kind of just sit it there. Um, interestingly, it's not a drone, it's a quadcopter. <clears throat> there is a difference. A drone is an autonomous vehicle. It flies itself. You might tell it where to go, but it's doing the flying. So you might say, you know, go forward, go back, go left, go up, go down, whatever. Um, but it's doing the flying. Uh, whereas uh, a quadcopter is fully controlled by me. It's got stabilization, which helps keep the thing stable so I have less work to do um, but if I don't give it input it will crash basically so I actually have to work to keep it stable in a particular place go I have to actually fly it up fly it down fly it that and so on now it might not seem a lot of difference but um, if I as I say if I take my fingers off the stick the quadcopter will sit there for a little bit and if it's reasonably calm it probably will sit there for quite a long time um, before it gets unstable and will uh, will crash. A quadcopter, sorry, a, a, a drone on the other hand will sit there until its battery goes flat and then it will gradually just sink or it will return to home depending on, on how it's been programmed. In some way, because a lot of the things that these days people buy are actually drones. They don't buy quadcopters, they buy drones. So all these things like the DJI Phantom and these sorts of things are drones. Autonomous vehicles, which are directed by the person flying. In actual fact, what it means with the drones, generally speaking, you don't actually need much skill in flying because you are, you know, because the drone is doing the flying. You're only saying literally, so go up, go down. And you're just giving it a direction you want to move it in. So uh, most people can fly a drone.
Not many people can fly a quadcopter, and even less people can fly a, a helicopter, and even less people can fly a helicopter without gyro assist, uh, including me. <laughs> I can't fly without gyro assist. Uh, I, st I first started to learn to fly helicopters oh, 30, 35 or so years ago. And back then they just started being produced really. They, um, they certainly weren't commonplace and they certainly weren't cheap and uh, there was no electronic assistance on them at all. These days they have all sorts of stabilizers uh, to assist but back then they were fully under pilot control and um, after about a year of, of me having one of these, they did uh, came on. Uh, what did come onto the market was what they called tail gyros, and they were fairly rudimentary gyros, mechanical gyros. So they've got big battery packs to keep a heavy weight spinning. And uh, what they used to do was help you with the tail rotor, because that's that's the bit that's the hard bit when you're flying. Um, without assist is the tail because every time you make the main rotor spin a little bit faster the tail wants to move in the opposite direction well it always wants to move in the opposite direction and the job is to uh, the tail rotor is to balance that so it keeps pointing the same direction and when you're trying to do that especially when you're trying to learn you're trying to balance the tail well during takeoff you start spinning start the engine while well, the engine's running um, so it was back there it was internal combustion none of this electric stuff back then so you um, wind the engine up and the clutch starts going you and you and it starts to drive the main rotor it gets to a certain point where there's enough force that the body starts to go the other way it starts to overcome the ground force of the helicopter set on the ground then you start having to feed in tail rotor control and your radios helped a little bit back then in that they would go as this goes up add a bit of that in automatically in the electronics but that was a fairly rudimentary thing even back then and they so you actually had to sort of keep an eye on that tail well actually the idea was keep an eye on the nose and if it started to move you to feed in the control whilst continuing to feed in um, throttle and uh, pitch control so that the thing would come up and lift off and uh, balance it on top of the column of air it was generating which is left right forward and back um, as you came up out to be able to come up into a hover and actually it was many years before I learned how to hover uh, and that tail rotor control um, was challenging <laughs> that's the word challenging almost impossible it could be done it was done lots of people did uh, it was really hard to do and of course you've got a uh, back then something like a seven eight hundred pound helicopter uh, in pounds so that would be what back then fourteen hundred dollars euros didn't exist but that would be about a thousand euros um, model which if it tipped over you smash the rotor blades rotor blades were oh i don't know about 20 pounds a pair that would be about 40 dollars or about 35 euros uh, and you could easily smash two or three pairs with it you know, just before you even got it off the ground just because it would tip if you didn't get it you, know, you control that it would tip smash if you're lucky they didn't but it and, and they motor stalled and they 
uh, force in, on on the blades didn't smash them, but um, that wasn't very uh, very common. They used to just splinter all over the place. So you'd have to change them. Make sure the whole of, you know all the main rotor didn't get bent. All the control linkage. So it was. Every time you did that, it was about 20 minutes before you were in a position to try again. And of course you're learning, so... Uh, I actually never did learn that at that time. Uh, I did get... <laughs> uh, what was the water disc on there? About 1.2 metres. That's about 4 feet. Uh, I have got hit by those blades sometimes when they were spinning at a fair rate. It, it hurts, I tell you. Uh, in a model, uh, on a four foot diameter blade, it is possible that the blade tips go supersonic at certain points. So I understand. I've never actually sat down and calculated it, but that's what I understand. That's how fast they are. Uh, and that's a lot of force. When it hits your knee, you know about it. Or when it hits your leg, does it be your shin bone at that point? Yeah. But, um, uh, make your eyes water, to say the least. So, somebody in the Netherlands in Parliament today quit because he was being stupid. Okay. I'm not fantastically into politics, Wolfie. Well, certainly I tend not to discuss politics. One of the... Um, there's kind of... There's more. But we kind of say, in, for amateur radio, we kind of say there's three rules. Uh, about what you do not talk about. First one is politics. <laughs> the second one is religion. And the third one is anything to do with sexual matters. Don't talk about them uh, because they cause so much controversy, argument and bad will and whatever that it, it, it effectively, it's certainly in the UK, uh, amateur radio, subjects not to be talked about, you can get your pandy slapped for um, for doing so. And, and generally speaking, I, I apply that elsewhere as well. Okay, go on then. Why did he quit? What was what was the um, what was the reason for uh, the quit? He said something stupid. I was about I was about to say something, but I just say, I just said enough discuss politics. <laughs> uh, well, see, you forgot it was being filmed. Yeah, okay, that would do it, I guess. It happens. It's, um, things like that have happened where. Um, Politicians in the UK have been having going on doing an interview or whatever, and they've gone out of the studio, perhaps got to the toilet or whatever, forgetting that their microphones, they're wearing radio microphones which are live and being recorded. Something to do with Russian, it's so stupid. Okay. about something that didn't happen. Okay, well... Mm, I 
tend not to tend. I don't do that, so I kind of can't understand why somebody would say bragging about something that they didn't do. But anyway, okay. You can say if you like, Wolf. You're dying to you're dying to tell us. So go ahead. I was only talking about model helicopters, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> particular tune that's playing always reminds me of Doctor Who. It's got that same pulse in the background. Yeah, you said so, Wolfie. You don't need to shout about it. <laughs> I can see it's got you all excited and amused, but... <laughs> see, alright, yeah. That's kind of in his spare time. See, yeah. Yeah, so... Went to negotiate a pipeline. I was going to say, I thought Russia did most of the, the, the exporting, but yeah. Mind you, you've probably got no sea oil as well, haven't you? But yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yes, we'd like to buy oil. Uh, subtext, we're going to invade you. Hmm. Well, I suppose I can see. <laughs> he says, being totally sarcastic, how one might get confused between we are going to invade you and we would like to buy some oil. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a bit... <laughs> That is a bit stupid, yeah. Especially if he's a CEO. I wonder how long he will remain CEO of Shell. <laughs> Because I suspect that would have made negotiations somewhat slightly um, uh, difficult.
Hmm. Yeah, I kind of follow then, yes. Slightly, ever so slightly, very much stupid. The interesting thing will be what what he says subsequently to justify what he said. Because it would be like, I felt I had to resign from the parliament. But this is, you know, the, the, you, when these sorts of things happen, they, always seem to want to justify their original opinion or whatever it was they said as being um, being correct Okay, well that that's the sort of thing that um, doesn't go down well with people often. You know, it's okay. You can kind of go. You know, the opinion's totally wrong. It's totally stupid. But, you know, whatever. But when somebody's actually caught lying like that, then um, that usually doesn't go down very well at all. You can almost you can almost see the comedy shows um, or the comedy sketches that would come out of this, you know, um, about this person who didn't hear something that he heard, uh, not being in the room that he was in, uh, whilst being uh, sort of uh, ten uh, hundred uh, miles away from the ten feet away from the person. You know, I'm getting myself confused, but that sort of thing. Yeah, I can see why you... You said it was incredibly stupid. But I would trust your opinion on that in the first place, you know. <laughs> I was not doubting you at all, Wolfie. Well, today here um, has been a relatively, not even relatively, quite a significant day. Fortunately, I can't say what he, no, I, I can say, it. I'm not going to. Um, I don't want to say what it was until hopefully next week, when now we'll be able to sort of mention uh, why today has been quite a significant day, but... Uh, um, so it's been, I've been quite busy today, quite, 
I was going to say a lot of running around. Most of it was driving rather than running. Uh, no running was involved at all. I walked everywhere <laughs> but, uh, and in the car. But uh, it has been a, a challenging, challenging. Wrong word. Si yeah, significance the right word there today. I am just teasing in a way, I'm not saying this because I'm not going to say why until hope oh, I'm going to say it, until hopefully next week. Fingers crossed. It's not even an NDA or anything like that. It's nothing, nothing that good. But it's not like I'm participating in a game release or something because I'm not. I can say that. In fact, I can say lots of things that is not. <laughs> Uh, I could probably go for the rest of the stream about what it's not and I think I should probably just drop the subject and wait till next week but I'm kind of a bit excited but I don't want to get too excited because it might not happen and if it doesn't happen I don't want to go no. don't want to be all depressed not that I get depressed but I do get well, I suppose it probably is a form of uh, being depressed. I just sort of don't really feel like doing anything and don't really want to talk about anything And when I get like that. But I would, yeah, if it didn't happen, I would be severely disappointed. That's probably the best way of putting it. Generally speaking, I'm too level a person. Okay. Go on then. It's interesting. <clears throat> I, I do not know Dutch. I. You've told me what it means. I I kind of feel that that is um, here was he, but I don't know what the last word actually means. And he sort of, you know, I don't know. You said what it means, but. Mhm. Mm Uh, okay, be careful with the um... Lebel me me how welcome to the stream uh, our two well two two of our four are, are asleep next door. Yeah, thanks, Wolfie. That's a good idea, especially given the um, one of the subjects. Uh, what's up? Well, the sk should I go into that one? The sky, clouds, <laughs> trees. Ah, uh, what's up? Oh, I don't know. It has been an exciting day. I've just been saying that. I can't. I don't want to say until next week. It's kind of like. Um, uh, I don't want to curse it. <laughs> That's probably the thing. But oh, I know it's a co colloquial and colloquialism. Uh, but uh, I, I do that with people sometimes. Uh, people, you know, using terminology like just for fun. Can't, well, it winds some people up. But I will take what they say literally on purpose. <laughs> no, you know what it's like. You you, you say, uh, say you know, this is going to happen, and, they, and because you've said it won't. You know, and so I'm I'm being just a little bit cautious because it is important. But um, 
Now, when it does happen, and it will eventually, I will reveal what it is, but it's it's nothing... Um, it doesn't really mean much to you guys, really. It's, it's important to me, but that's about it. Uh, bit of fencing. Yeah, you do that too. <laughs> yeah, but it is kind of... A, it, I, I do it as well because... Um, uh, I, I often do it, especially with new, new people I meet, just because it makes them pause for a little bit. Um... I, oh, you're into philosophy now, Wolfie. Is the heaven, is heaven up? Well, I don't know. That's an interesting answer. Yeah, right angle to this reality. Though my immediate reaction to that is, why isn't it at a left angle? Sorry. In the past, I used to have. Re there was a friend of mine, and we used to have completely nonsensical discussions. And I mean, completely nonsensical. It didn't make, even make sense to us. But we we would do it in uh, in company when there were other people around. And we we'd especially do it if we're in something like a bar or something like that, where there was somebody sort of being nosy, listening in. You know. And we just have complete nonsensical sub, uh, conversations. You know, it might be something like, um, uh, I don't know, it's been raining today, so it starts off and then you go, yes, but only when the clouds were red. Um, okay, but that could be due to the smoke coming out of the uh, the steam engines. And and then, but, and then, yeah, but you must remember to, to fire the steam engines with diamonds and we'd have come I mean that's not even as daft as it got and we used to have conversations like that we'd gone for about five minutes and and people would be completely sort of and it didn't actually mean anything at all it was fun <laughs> oh you are good Bleeble you are good you're not you're not thrown by something like that I suppose it, <laughs> yeah, perhaps it does. So I haven't seen you before, I don't think, Bleeble, unless you've changed your name. But welcome to the stream. Oh, stack time, Wolfie. What's what what is what is the snack of today then? I'm just trying to think. I, I'm in the UK. I can't remember what they call them. In the UK, we we get some thin. I was going to say potato sticks, a bit like French fries, but thinner. But they 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 they're not potato. Well, no idea what they are. They're a crispy type material, salt and vinegar flavour on them. And I really can't remember what they. But I'm kind of got a craving for having some of those at the moment. Little tight, they're, they're usually about an inch. Well, what would that be? About four centimeters long, something like that. Salt and vinegar flavored, and and the little tiny sort of, as I say, um, French fries shaped things, but uh, but thinner. And I can't remember what they're made of. Oh, okay, so then sorry, um, I didn't remind remember uh, you were doing a wood burn of, of a cat, yeah. That would be accurate. Um, I've done. I've done more than one. Well, having said a cat, I'll get it. Just bear with me a second. It's at the other end of the room. But it could be one of two. Where is it? Oh, it's away. I can't get the other one. It, it could have been this one, which is Theo. But I also did a tiger uh, out of the night, and that's elsewhere in the house at the moment. So I can't, uh, I can't actually get that one. But I, that was a black 
background. Um, I did one that was kind of like, he says, looking for this. Uh, um, it might have been a pyro pyrography version of this. Which is uh, which is scraper board. So it may have been that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jasper. It's kind of I've got a terrible memory, I'm afraid. But it's kind of I got I got a memory for faces more than I have for names. But yeah, I kind of remember working on the years. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind of you. I shall just put that away to keep it from uh, getting scratched. I need to get some varnish on that at some point. Uh, but I need sort of um, a, a matte water based varnish uh, to get them on. Ethan Gold, you sound now like you're having a. Into, but since then, um, and I uh, say, so unfortunately, I can't get the, um, the other pyrography. Um, out, but since then I did do a couple, a uh, couple more pyrography items. Um, this one being a, a Hearthstone card, and a second Hearthstone card. So you've missed a fair bit. And of course, what we what we just finished having done those two is some wood carving, which is. They're now on the floor. Um, well we just uh, just finished the wood carving. Unfortunately, the, the lighting doesn't make this stand out very well in here. But uh, that uh, that last pyrography item uh, is a fan, uh, is a feral gibbera, and that's what this is. <laughs> There is, and that's, well, yes, there's, um, there's quite a bit of detail in there. That's kind of... The trick with pyrography is putting in enough detail, but not going absolutely silly. <laughs> when I'm doing the cats, I, uh, this one was a deliberate attempt not to put too much detail in with the cat, with Theo here. But just to do enough so that you sort of could see what it was and it was a ginger cat and it, it looked detailed. Um, the cats I normally do, I, uh, I normally do them in a different style and they get incredibly detailed. Um, and even when I was doing this gibber here, the, the fur um, that's on him. I was trying my best not to get too detailed in the fur but just doing enough to make it look like furry feathers and um, uh, avoid because with, with the cats I, I really like to get into doing um, the, the, the real detail on the fur. Yeah, the, the gibber's fur, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's let me just pick up Junior and Felix. I was bit, well, it, uh, the gibber has quite coarse fur, but I was specifically avoiding what I did with uh, with these two. Um, their their fur is incredibly detailed on these, and it's uh, quite time consuming to do, but for cats especially. The detail on this really sort of makes it look um, like real fur. Now let me see if I can just stand them there <laughs> without them going all over the place. It, yeah, well that's kind of and, and when they, when you get that sort of detail, it kind of shines as well. I mean, pyrography shines anyway. Uh, and look, always looks sort of silk, uh, um, shiny. Always looks, yeah, shiny. Um, 
but it kind of because it's so fine it does look like very soft fur and um, but hmm. i was about to say you could you, you almost feel like stroking it but i just i like the texture anyway so i just stroke the wood anyway <laughs> and, and especially when i'm carving and, and pyrography i do tend to sort of yeah feel it slightly You're only... Mm. <laughs> uh. So at the moment, this is kind of just a chill thing to do. It's um, it's quite a relaxing thing to do. We've, I've just spent quite a bit of time um, doing the carving. And it's... I enjoy carving, but it's quite hard work to do because you, you, you're doing a lot of really um, strength controlled movements with the chisels and I, I generally would only do about a week at a time but uh, having just finished it, it I'm just having a complete sort of rest it's, it's not exactly stressful but you know, one slip with a chisel, and you can knock a complete detail off, and you've got a lot of carving to fix it. So, um, this is something that doesn't take a lot of effort to do, but it gives a nice, beautiful picture. <laughs> That's why I was laughing, Wolfie. I was waiting for that comment or something similar. <laughs> uh, so and, and uh, I don't know if you've seen these things before magic dots but uh, there is a pattern on here which I'm sticking the dots on but the, the point about these pictures is uh, this sparkle I'm sticking little tiny uh, the little tiny plastic dots uh, they're a dome shape, but the top's faceted. It's cut like a diamond uh, top, which is where the originals, I guess, get the name from, because this is a clone. Um, diamond dots is what they, uh, they they sometimes get called, or diamond painting. But they, these things actually sparkle. The camera picks it up a little bit, but not a great deal. Uh, in person, it sparkles a lot more. So it, it, you get sort of a nice pix, uh, pixelated or, or well, pixel art picture out of it at the end. <laughs> so this is kind of a bit like painting by numbers. It, it's, um, it doesn't take a lot of effort to do, but it's uh, it, it's quite a relaxing sort of thing to do, surprisingly. When you think about it, just sort of taking a, a one of these dots and just placing it in the right place. But the, these kit, the, these are kits. They, they are quite, also quite good to do with friends, if you have friends so inclined. Because um, you can get two or three people around the table, around the table and you can all be doing uh, doing bits. Uh, I'm doing this one at the moment. We, we've previously just been doing these at weekends uh, as a rest with the carving. I say because when you're carving with that much effort, and also the other thing is when you're carving, you've got your head down all the time. You're looking down. You get a stiff. Well, when you get older, like me, you get a stiff neck. And it, the weekends give it, doing this gave me a chance to give it a rest. But uh, uh, now, now that the carving is uh, is done, I'm. Uh, I'm finishing this project off before I move on to something else. I'm not quite sure what that will be. I may be stabbing things with a sharp needle, but we shall see. Oh, I may come back to doing this other thing, which is um, some more pyrography. Only this one is also going to be a leopard, but this one is a real close-up. This is on paper, though, rather than wood. So that this one should be quite an impressive um, Thing, but I'm put, I'm been doing that off stream. Mm. 
Yeah, that is kind of what I was talking about, uh, Bleeble. Um, I call it Punchcraft just because that's the manufacturer of the needles that I get, or I've got, uh, for it. That's what they call it. But it does have another name. Um, and it is actually how, how rugs are made, uh, commercially, but they, you, they don't use one needle, they use hundreds. Um, and there's different sizes of needles, because this, this is a, done with a small needle, you can do things like this. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this knot stuck to, but this was, this was done the same way. Um, but I've got uh, some actual, not exactly carpet backing, it's a canvas backing. Uh, and some uh, wool, basically, um, carpet type wool, uh, which I just uh, I might do something with because it's it's stabbing things with a sharp needle seems to get people quite interested on uh, on Twitch. <laughs> now, now, Wolfie. When people guess, they always have to be, uh, there's always a 50% chance of getting it right. This is actually quite a nice thing to do whilst I'm streaming because I, I can talk while I'm doing this without having to concentrate. Uh, whilst I'm doing some things like the carving, especially where you're using these razor sharp chisels, I have a tendency to uh, to get lost in it. I'll just concentrate so much on what I'm doing that I don't talk. I go quiet. At least with this, I can I can do two things at once. You know, as they say in the UK. As uh, I was going to say, as they say in the UK, it, it's. Um, completely atypical for men to be able to do two things at the same time. But um, I at least can talk whilst I do this. And I don't have to concentrate that much that I stop talking. And I can even get a chance to read uh... You're almost 20 and you're so old. <laughs> oh dear. You youngsters who think you're old. Yeah, you are old. You're older than somebody who's one. You're nowhere near as old as I am. And I am... Uh, the, the odd thing about getting old though, Wolfie, apart from just forgetting things, which happens when you're younger anyway, but it's, it's just more of a fun thing to say when you're older. It's a good excuse. Um, is that you never feel that you're getting old. You don't feel old. You just feel, I feel the same as it did when I was your age, or even younger. Can you materially say what was different about <laughs> feeling 15 and feeling 20? Uh, you, you might be able to, but you know, just in general. I mean, I can't. Um, I had already started work when I was 15, so... Um, I, I don't really... I really don't feel any different, you know? I never really noticed the fact that... Yeah, it was my birthday yesterday. And yet, you know... When somebody says, you know, how, how does it feel to be X years old? Well, I generally say 24 hours older than I was yesterday. And, it, you know, it doesn't mean anything to me. Hello, Jasper. <laughs> now, that's coincidence when you and, you, you, you and Bleeble are uh, joined together. Thank you. Uh, yeah, indeed. Thank you very much, Bleeble and Jasper. Um, it kind of, kind of is like eight because it is pixel art. I mean, that's what eight bit was, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> well, it's quite funny. Uh, eight bit art uh, can be incredibly detailed. 
But um, I know what you mean. Um, yes, it's 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 pixel because of course these things are about. I was about to say two millimeters. The, the the squares are about two millimeters square, and these little uh, things are uh, a circular, but they fit in that two millimeter uh, to square. So it wants to make them two millimeters diameter, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, they are uh, the same sort of style. Actually, I haven't seen these are kits, and I haven't actually seen any of. I mean, it would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Some of the old eight-bit games some of the pictures from them it would be a quite a good thing to for the manufacturers but they tend to stick to things like the tigers and stuff you love pixel art <laughs> yeah uh... yep so do i although i prefer modded minecraft i don't play vanilla minecraft i play i generally play modded minecraft but the weird thing about Minecraft is it's well, oh, oh, vanilla-ish Minecraft is it's relatively low resolution textures, but you never notice them. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. It it it's it is one of my a few favourite games. Is uh, is Minecraft? Although having said which, I must admit I haven't actually played it now for over a year. Um, I used to play it quite a bit. I did actually, about, uh, about 18 months ago now, I just stopped playing games for full stop. I stopped doing a lot of things full stop for a while. And I've just started playing some games again. And I'm starting to think about uh, starting up a, a new Minecraft world on the latest uh, uh, latest version. I tend to play the Die Wolf packs. FD, yeah, FDB Infinity Evolved. Okay. It would be a it would be a pack I'd play. I, I mean, I, I as I say, I tend to play a lot of the Die Wolf packs just because he has a similar taste in mods to me. I have done for a, a long time. You know, it's I'm not playing it because he's Die Wolf. It's because the mod scene he uh, includes in his packs are the ones that I like playing. So, but yeah, if Infinity involved. It's uh, uh, I. With some of these, I actually enjoy playing the sky maps, the sky block maps, because that that kind of feels. Well, it, it's it, it, I'm going to say it's different to Minecraft, is it? I mean, Minecraft is kind of about mining, which you can't do on the sky map. But um, it that that sort of bootstrapping from I don't know block of lava or whatever you whatever they give you to start with, all the way up you know until you're sort of running nuclear reactors and things. I kind of find really fascinating to do. Yeah, I, I, I've watched quite a few people play. I, I do have watched, keep watching Minecraft being played. Yeah, it's it's, just, it's got a lot in it though, hasn't it? I mean, the the infinity involved. It's got it, it's it is just about every uh, mod they can think of. Well, I'm exaggerating, but it's got a lot of mods in it. Uh, yeah, I've never, I have never played expert mode. Oh, I do enjoy Sk Sky Factory. I mean, Sky Factory is the same. Uh, well, which Sky Factory? Because there was at one point there was two. I'm assuming you mean the FTB one. Is something flashing in here? Oh yes, it is. Um, Mad Pack is one I haven't heard of. Don't, well, you know I don't have the time, Wolfie, unfortunately, otherwise I would. be quite happy to do it, but I don't have the time to uh, you know, consistently play. It's a completely different experience, isn't it, Jasper? When you do that. I... Um, I was about to say, I don't think I've actually ever played vanilla Minecraft. I probably did when I first registered an account, but not for very long. It, it's the mod bit. It's the mods that make it for me being able to do. It. It's the automation stuff. I, I love doing that. You know, getting uh, getting everything automated, balancing everything. So, you know, if you I don't know. 
if, you, if you're growing trees for fuel you're growing enough trees without getting too many uh, you know and everything's balanced to be able to produce the the energy you know the RF that you need and things like that yeah <laughs> it is and it's it, it is well, the one thing the one thing about well I suppose I was going to say mods it's um, I was thinking I guess I'm thinking more about the um, not exactly the maps but you get you, you know, I mean things like the sky factory which is which is all about the mods but it's a completely different play style and then you get some of the questing maps you know um, oh I'm trying to think of who it was now but you get um, it, it's oh I mean, the the one I'm watching people play at the moment is Lost Souls, if you know which I mean. You know, it's and it's um, but it's it's these. There's a scenario, and there's been some. There's been uh, a couple which were sort of like in space, uh, well, in space or something, um, where again you you're bootstrapping from from there's some reason why you're lost in space or something, and. Uh, they're quite. I mean, they're, they're quite fun to watch because of the story behind it, as well as the mods, and they, and they just add to it. Just like being fully overpowered, Wolfie. That's all it is, you know. It's like your um, your Hearthstone cards. You just like the cards that make you so overpowered that it's just funny. <laughs> So have you, uh, uh, Bleeble and, and Jasper, well you as well, Wolf, you ever played um, games like the, the Factoria or Fortress Craft Evolved? Oh, in, in this case, Jasper, it's dead easy. This is a kit, I don't decide. This is, um, this is bought. I, I'm not actually, I've not designed this at all. I am literally, um, yeah, it is just a bulk kit. I am just assembling this, uh, and these things come in, uh, uh, come in the kit. You know, and they're all there's a key down here which is is, is predefined for me. So I'm not designing this. Um, generally speaking, though, with uh, with with because I I do cross stitch, which is pixel art as well, where I have done designs for it. But in that particular case, um, again. You're using a design application, and the color palette is kind of defined for you because you know it's trying. You, you're saying, you know, I want to use 16 colors, or you know, I want to use eight colors because you limit the color palette. Otherwise, it would say, you know, there is one square of this color right in the middle, and there's another unique square of another color over here, and that gets really expensive and really difficult to do. So you sort of say, you know, eight. 8 colours, 16 colours, however many you feel is appropriate, and you let the application do it, so um, I don't actually uh, hand draw or hand design pixel art at all. I, I enjoy doing pixel I enjoy pixel art, I love sort of doing... Pixel art is what got me into a lot of things, because I am um, a licensed radio amateur, and one of the things that I was really fascinated by was receiving tele well what they would call well I suppose like a fax or receiving pictures over radio and receiving weather satellite images over over the radio and they are essentially transmitted one pixel at a time and I got really fascinated in pixel art because when you actually see something like that building up one pixel at a time across your screen um, it, for me, you know, it was quite exciting, and I've enjoyed art, pixel-based art, and um, 
I quite often, when I'm doing uh, some art stuff, I just keep zooming in until they become pixels. So, um, you know, instead of drawing a 1028 canvas or whatever, 1,000, 4,000 pixel canvas, I'll just keep zooming in and I'll eventually be painting single pixels. But that's just me. Yeah, well, the colours are obviously coming from real life. The one thing about this, though, is, is these sparkle. So these are designed to sparkle. It's n uh, this is about half finished, so most of what you're seeing actually isn't. hasn't got these dots on yet. So the black and the blue, and some of the some of the brown, is so uh, you know down here. These are these are already in place. So as, as this moves or you move past it, yeah, they sparkle. And so you know once this is complete. You can imagine the whole thing just just uh, is. I would say it's iridescent because that implies lots of colours, but it just sparkles all over the place as you just move about. You like making, <laughs> yeah, but you teach them that through the game, not right at the start. <laughs> FTB is that's the first one you've played. Okay. So you've you've picked the most comprehensive, largest um, mod pack. That, I, I was going to say known to man. That's I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it's a big pack to to, to learn mods on. You, you're doing well. It is it is Jasper. I mean that's the the the, the with the amateur radio with the weather satellites. It's it's actually called slow scan, um, but it's a bit like a fax machine if you like or, or, a, or even a printer but it's just you get about eight pixels uh, no about four pixels a second so you'd literally see something like this building up across across the lines like this and that was that was a fascinating thing but yes it is it's exactly how they work on television they just send them a lot faster yeah <laughs> no, Wolfie. <laughs> Thank you for very much, but uh, nah, it's bedtime for me. I, I well, one time, I was would be quite happy of that. I, I'm, I'm a relatively speaking a night person, and um, that gets up early in the morning. Um, but no, midnight's a bit. It's a bit late. <laughs> it's a bit late. Um, the uh, the other two that I mentioned uh, uh, games so, so the uh, Fortress Craft Fortress Craft Evolved and um, uh, Factoria um, similar idea in games so Fortress Craft Evolved is it isn't Minecraft okay it's it's a block it's a uh, voxel voxel based game but it's a block based game you have to go mining for um, you know iron copper um, you know all of these things uh, so it's a bit like playing minecraft with mods in that you you know you 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 have machines that will do the mining you improve the machines you've got tra belts to transport things you've got the smelters you then you know they go to make and you, you've got this continuous progression all the way up until I actually don't know what the end game is on that because um, it's changed a bit since I um, played it. Uh, in fact, the um, the developer streams on uh, here on Twitch, so if you see Projector Games uh, in um, Fortress Craft Evolved as the game, he's the developer, um, and and that's another one. It, it's in this. It's got the same feel if you like as playing Minecraft with mods in that you're developing things. Fortress Craft Evolved sorry, um Factorio is two two dimensional, but you're looking sort of down on it. And that's another one where you're sort of mining materials, smelting them, the idea being that you 
eventually build a rocket and launch a satellite into service, but you into into space. But you uh, again, you start with uh, you start with nothing. You start with a furnace and a very poor miner. Um, you get those two things, and then you you use those to mine coal and mine iron, which then gets you another miner, which gets you copper, which then lets you make something, you know, makes you, lets you make a power plant, and, and you just keep progressing like this until you, you get to the point of a rocket. So it's another another game of if the similar idea. They're not the same, but they kind of feel similar, if that makes sense. It might be a good movie, unfortunately, Wolf. Um, it doesn't matter how good a movie, movie it is, I can't do it. I need to sleep. Yeah, I'm getting old. I've not mentioned it before, you know. I'm, I'm getting. <laughs> Actually, they say old people need less sleep, but. Mm. Uh, oh, I see. You're imitating me in in um, in, in Hearthstone, are you? Hearthstone Hearth. Okay. Oh, oh, that's your game, isn't it, Wolfie? The one you're doing. Very, very rarely, uh, Bleeble. I, I, I'm, I don't have a lot of time to play games, so it's public servers. Don't mind playing in private servers if you you know what I mean with with friends and stuff like that. But it's public servers. I don't fantastically enjoy because you get the people who are doing silly things, which make it less fun, shall we say? And I don't have a lot of time to play, so I don't necessarily get on with uh, get on sufficiently, you know, to to. Um, to play a lot with other people, you know, so it, you sort of they're doing 90% of the work, and, and that doesn't feel sort of really comfortable. No, I have absolutely, um, I'll be fair to that. Um, I do not have any tattoos, I have absolutely no interest in getting any tattoos at all. I find them fascinating, I love watching them, I love seeing them being done um, and uh, I think they're great art just not for me which is kind of kind of interesting because I'm an airbrush artist as well I do airbrushing and quite often there's a crossover between people who do airbrushing and people who do tattoos there's quite a few you, you often find that a tattoo artist is also does airbrushing or a lot of tattooists, a lot of the airbushes will do tattoo as well. Um, but I've no interest in doing either doing it nor, nor uh, having one. You think that's backwards? Oh, you think what Wolfie said was backwards? Okay. I suspect Wolfie's talking about his. Uh, uh, Wolfie's talking about the game that they uh, they designed. You're confused. <laughs> I was about to say join the stream. <laughs> you have joined the stream. That's why you're confused. Um, Wolf, Wolfie is a beginning uh, game designer, and they're talking. Uh, I, I'm, I gather Stone Hearth is the name of the game that they that they are currently developing. Oh, 
A lot of imagination there, you see. Yeah, so given given that you kind of enjoy the modded Minecraft, uh, check those other two out. Just to have a look at them. I'm not suggesting that you like them or otherwise. Yes, they are. Um, they're the sort of games you either like or you don't like, I guess. So, but uh, there's, uh, there are people streaming them, so you can always sort of take a look and check them out. You are suggesting you immortalise their characters in game, eh, Wolfie? Hmm. Uh, 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 I, I, I gather I got turned into a slave in in the game, so. <laughs> you might want to see what you're going to be before you agree. <laughs> That actually sounds like something real Jasper does, that lamp basket, and for some reason it sounds... Trouble is sometimes with, uh, with things like that, you know, that chair, I end up thinking chair why did it get called that you know why is a chair called a chair why didn't we call it fred or why didn't we call a table why is a table not a wardrobe why is a wardrobe <laughs> sometimes get to that sometimes kind of thing and for some reason just yeah i will think about something like chair and it doesn't quite sound right sometimes <laughs> oh, sorry, Wolfie. Did did I put them off <laughs> mentioning slavery there? Well, I don't know. Um, that's about. I guess that depends on whether you're talking about turtles as in real turtles, or whether you're talking about the Green Ninja Turtle uh, cartoon characters. If you're talking about the cartoon characters, then no, I haven't. Um, real turtles, my um, the computer case that I have which uh, has a um, the, the 
I've got water cooled PC. I wanted something different. So I I actually airbrushed my PC case. Which is what what actually start which is the reason I started airbrushing. And the reason I started doing art again. Um, and, um, so I can't actually remember when I did this case. The i7 was a relatively new processor, so it's a few years ago now. Um, and what I did was I did an under, I'll say an under under sea scene, uh, aquarium scene, water cool PC. Kind of felt like a natural thing. Um, and on there, there is a turtle on it. There's a porpoise and and some rays and, and angel fish and there's coral and things, but. Yeah, the PC is um, has got a, a turtle on it. Oh, uh, yeah, it will be a turtle, I guess. Yeah. Real turtles. Okay, yeah, and then it would be a subject that I would be interested in doing. It could be really quite graceful underwater. I shall write that idea down for something to do in the future. Thank you. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, I still have the case. Um, I don't think this. Um, one of the cameras. I can't actually get over there with with one of the cameras, but what I can do, I guess, is just. I just flip this around a little bit. If I go to um, to that camera there, and just this is a bit awkward to get. No, it's not. A, you can't really see it. That is that is the computer case there, but you can't. I mean, there's there's a, there's a ray on the bottom, but it's not really very good. Let me see if I've got. Um, I've got the um, I've got the front panels just to give you an idea what it looks like, but I can't. I don't think I can actually can't actually show you the um, the turtle that's on it because it's on it's on one of the sides. Um, The front, the front drive covers um, have been painted as well, and there's, they're, they're, they've been painted um, when they're on, so they've got an actual thing. And what I'll do uh, after the stream, I'll tweet, a, I'll, I'll take a photograph, and I'll, I'll tweet a, a picture of um, the two sides, so that you can uh, you can see. Actually, yes, you are right, Bleeble, uh, uh, because of course, as well, there. Are, they're relatively, I was going to say they're a relatively monochrome um, thing. I mean, even the shells, you know, because of the the way they're grown. It's, yeah, you're right. Thank you. Oh, they well, people do, but unfortunately, airbrushing that that case took uh, it took me. Okay. It was the it was the very first thing I airbrushed. Okay, so I was a beginner, but it took about twenty hours uh, to to do um, because it, I mean it, it it took and that was spread over about a month because uh, it it had to be stripped down completely first. It then had to have a spray undercoat on it, uh, H prime on it. Then then it had to be sprayed blue, which is a few coats. Um, and then, and then the individual, um, you know, fish and and coral, and there's about how many is there? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There's about there's about twenty-five fish rays. Um, there's a porpoise on there. There's a killer whale on there, an orca. 
uh, as well as there's there's a, um, a turtle, a sea turtle uh, on there as well. So each of those they took about an hour to two hours a piece um, to to sort of paint. So it, it's an expensive thing, unfortunately, because yeah, and then <laughs> not easy things to ship about. <laughs> but yeah. Um, there are there are people that will do a case for you like that, and uh, I mean I did think about putting a glass side in it, but it was kind of everybody has a glass sided PC. They all sort of show the inside. They put lights in. Well, mine is kind of completely unique. I <laughs> the one thing I did think about doing with it is um, when it was finished, because at the time I was. I was probably active on quite a few of the forums. I, I, I did think about sticking a, a hose pipe just sort of into one of the openings uh, and sort of just going, yeah, I'm, I'm going to water cool my PC. <laughs> but. Yeah. And well, that was, and I mean, it still is. I, I mean, I've never ever seen anything like it. And as I say, I was just kind of. It was just amusing to me. It was a water cult PC, so it's full of water. Um, I haven't worked with ink or markers, no. Uh, well, uh, ink? Okay. No. I'll say no. I mean, I have used ink. What I used ink for was not the thing that just fell on the floor. I've played about with ink a little bit um, with things like this. So this is scraper board. So and, and the green here is ink. Um, but no, I've not really played about with ink. It's it, I'm not nothing against it. I just haven't tried it yet. The things like the Copic markers do look really interesting to play with because you can color blend with them, which is a lot better than some of the markers. I just haven't, you know. There's so many, there's so many different medium, um, you know, with with like the airbrushing. The, I, I do so many different things. I'd like to try pastels, for example. Uh, they just, I can't try everything. But yeah. <laughs> uh, that's kind of you. I'm rather pleased with that. <laughs> I think that, was this my sec. This was done on stream as well. Uh, all of these things that you're seeing here are done on st have been done on stream. I didn't stream the PC. That was before. That's before I ever knew about streaming. But uh, plus, <laughs> plus I didn't have a PC while I was doing. Actually, no, I did on that one. Yes. And that was that's water cool because the PC I had before it had 16 fans in it. And I was tired of the noise, so this, that's why that's watercolor. It's virtually silent. But thank you. Yes, this was. Uh, I haven't. I still haven't decided. I mean, this is. A, this was intended to be at night, but I'm not actually sure. It's. It's whether well, it's night or day. But with the thing about this one was when we did this, because I did this on stream, and then we put the uh, we. That's the royal we. Put the green on it, and it completely transformed the picture just by putting the green on it, making it grass. And it's an amazing thing. Yeah, this is complete. I, I didn't intend to do anything else with it. It just literally the green. Uh, it, it just sort of really makes it, made it, it really made everything just pop out. Yeah, in some ways, uh, Jasper, the um, with all of the, the the problem with a lot of art stuff is that you know to uh, to do something you know like we, we say we're just using things like sharpies um, or even the proper proper sort of art markers to get a reasonable set. 
it's just so expensive these days that you know it's I, I sort of pick really carefully one of the things I do though is I, I do uh, art on the computer so the, there's um, a painter by um, I've forgotten who makes painter now but that simulates a lot of things like markers or pascals and so it, it's quite a good application for me anyway I, I play about with that so I try out doing what you know whether I find I am happy working with things like pastels or working with things like markers I get to sort of play about with it a bit so it, it saves money and it's a lot less cleaning up as well yeah you're right it would um, definitely would uh, a, a sort of a nebula perhaps or something like that uh, would be really uh, really good of course there are certain scenes that just have to be black and white like that one that just has to be black and white you can't put cut well actually I suppose what would be good is, is some blue and green just in here but that one virtually has to be black and white Well, I, I, I had to do that one. <laughs> it's actually the that image. I mean, a, you may recognise it. It is an iconic image. Um, I just had to have a go. It's it's not the best, um, but Earthrise uh, on Scraperboard. It's a space scene. I mean, the Scraperboard is fantastic for any space scene, um, and I just had to have a go, and that's. So I think this was about the second one I tried. And of course, yeah, and then, and I mean that translates quite well to anything where you're doing that sort of line, the line based shading as well, the cross hatching. But yeah, so you're working on wood. Um, one of the things I've thought about with uh, doing it with, uh, with wood is Um, for things like the pyrography, so I don't know if I just pick pick the cat here, for example. Um, you know, maybe with something like this, just for example, just making his eyes green, you know, using an ink, water water-based ink, for example, just make his eyes green, just to sort of make them stand out. Um, so I've kind of thought about doing that, so you know, maybe trying doing that sort of thing, or potentially with a carving. So if you take something like the gibber here. So I mean, his his eyes are green, but you know, he's putting his gums in bright red. You know, the blood type of thing. Just not colouring everything, but just odd elements, just to make them uh, stand out. Black Sharpie on board. That would be kind of an interesting because that's kind of like pyrography. But you've got a different level of control. I mean, the first, the, 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 that's the first ever scraper board I did. That was done on stream. I'm sure it's just an art show now, isn't it? But um, there's you know, quite a lot of... Uh, I didn't know what I was doing then, but I'm actually quite, I was actually quite pleased with that. And um, since I'm just showing it off, um, this was the last one that was done. Yeah, of this uh, uh, in this sort of um, scraper board. What was this? Oh, oh, the the wood. I suspect you probably mean because um, you won't know who the person is. Well, you might know who the person is. He's relatively famous. He's a singer. He's John Miles. Um, this is a character from a Hearthstone card. 
called the Feral Gibber. So I did one in pyrography and then I felt like doing some carvings. So it seemed like a, an interesting subject to do um, to carve. And so I manipulated the image a little bit. Um, you know, this, this, this gibber looks like he's leaping through this window uh, with those really sharp teeth. Um, he would like to say hello. <laughs> And I kind of thought, you know, maybe you, uh, perhaps um, I was thinking of paint actually, but ink's probably a, a better idea. Uh, you know, of, of the lips are bright red and the gums are sort of uh, blood red. Uh, you know, the mouth is black. You know, you'd maybe do something with the teeth, you know, slightly black or something like that. But you know, and, and the the eyes glow green. And that would be kind of enough just to make that sort of thing really leap out at you and sort of make you sort of step back a little bit. Trouble is, with something like that, I'm always a little reluctant. I mean, there's there's 20 plus hours of carving uh, in this, and you you put ink on here, and it doesn't look right. There's not a lot you can do about it, because <laughs> of course it soaks into the top layers and uh, I mean even something like um, uh, acrylic paint kind of is in the top layer. You, you, you'd end up having to carve them away. If it looked really terrible, came out a funny colour or something like that, you're kind of stuffed. Um, and I guess, you know, well, I, I would sort of you know, try it on the back or something just to see, but you're still sort of at that do I or don't I have only spent 20 hours on it. An interesting idea. You could do something like that. The, the one thing that's a bit difficult with... Um, with something, uh, I've probably got some as well. The, the one thing you'd, you'd ideally want to do with something like that though is, is embed them such that it looked like the, they were inside the head as opposed to having a hole drilled and, and put on. So as though they'd been put on from the inside. Um, just because that would kind of look... Not that a gibber looks natural if you know what I mean, but it would kind of look... Uh, but it's an interesting idea. A glass bead of some kind. Um, I'll have to see what I've got. Pencil first. Yeah! Oh, definitely with ink. Yeah, no, I mean, um, have you ever, have you seen engineering pens? Or draftsman's pens? I don't know if, uh, if that's something you're familiar with. Um, if you're in the UK, I'd say a company called Rotary make them. Um, they're, they're meant, well, they, uh, they are originally sort of uh, done for draftsmen and, and the ink that they use as well is, is really sort of, it, it doesn't run on, when you get decent quality paper, it doesn't sort of spread. So you get really crisp, uh, really crisp lines and, and the pens come in something like 0.01 millimetres uh, if you really want really, really fine lines. Um, and, and the, the, the ink flow with, with them is absolutely fantastic. You know, you can literally sort of go across and you'll get ink flow all the way. Uh, which is, and you, and you can get the, the pens raising, uh, you know, range in size, anything up to about two millimeters across, that sort of thing. So you've got uh, a fantastic range of pens. Fortunately, again, like a lot of these things, they're not particularly cheap, but they are really high quality pens for doing things like that. Uh, pencil. I, I actually do like uh, pencil drawing. I'm not too bad at pencil drawing. I, I, um, I always have a problem. And it affects me more with pencils than it does just about anything else for some reason. I really don't know why. But framing something, I can't, as in getting the right field of view. So if you've got something this size, sizing everything so it looks right <laughs> I usually end up with things too big 
for the frame that they're in. Um, but yeah, I love pencil drawing. I've got, a, I do have a set of pencils. Um, but yeah, they they are nice from that perspective, just because you can, um, you you can erase. Unlike pyrography, you can erase the pencils. Uh, you can even have. Where's it gone? Oh, there yeah. Nice. Um, nice. You know, I'm talking to I'm talking to a camera that you can't uh, that you're not actually able to see. Um, nice fancy. Uh, oh, the battery's flat. Electric ra erasers. <laughs> That's good. I need some new batteries. Oh, they're corroded. Let's get them out of there before that goes. Let's get rid of. Those are Duracell batteries. They are not supposed to corrode. Um, thank you for talking about um, pencil, because I wouldn't have looked in there. I wouldn't have tried that. That was working not so long ago, because I was using it. Um, but now I have to get another couple of um, batteries. But that's a nice tool for working with um, um, with pencil because it's because uh, it spins at a reasonable it, it stays relatively clean and you get into quite nice detail with it to do, sort of do negative to take the pencil out yeah electric erasers i mean you can get you can get pencil based versions of these um you, well you know it's like in propelling pencils you know you've got the eraser on the back of it well you can get this one isn't but it this is a this is um this is a, an engraving tool, but you know it's a bit like a, a, a clutch pencil. But you, they, they do things like this where you, you you do that and you put the eraser end in, so you can you can use different erasers um, in, in a pencil style, which is a bit easier than using these sorts of uh, these sorts of things. It's great, great erasers. Um, are these? They get called plastic erasers. Um, have some kneaded erasers around here. They're a different thing. They work. They're an interesting thing to use. I don't use them very often. I, I am not that. That sort of lifts the lead off as opposed to rubs it off. But you know, they, 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 um, these sorts of things are good for, for detailed work with an eraser. And of course, this just saves you. Uh, the, the thing you have to be a little bit careful with these is. And I can't show you now is, but not to press too hard because it wears the paper away. And then when you when you try and go over the top of it because you change the surface texture of the paper, it looks differently. Yeah, that's right. Well, and one tip for working with pencils and erasers: get yourself a paintbrush. A, a clean paintbrush <laughs> um, because one of the things that can happen and depends on your paper and on the thing that you the uh, pencil that you're using but you know it, it, you sort of erase erase stuff and you've got all the stuff left over it's sort, of, sort of sat on your if you push it away with your hands what happens is you tend to press it into the paper so you streak it and if you do that on wood for example it gets into the pores of the wood and it's real difficult to get out. So once, if you erase it with something something like a razor or something like this, with a paintbrush, you can brush it and it lifts it away from the surface. It doesn't push it in. Uh, and so you stand a lot better chance of getting the debris away without actually marking the paper or the wood. I mean, I use a, a big one. You can use small paint bushes as well, but something like this, just a, you know, th these are from DIY shops and they're generally relatively cheap. You don't need anything expensive, more or less the cheapest thing that you got. Relatively soft, you want. I mean, this this isn't bad, um, but something relatively soft. You don't want something so stiff and hard that it scrubs. But this is, um, and of course, you can always just use it that way to lift stuff off. If something's been a little bit awkward you can more or less just scoop it off and the bristles will pick it up. And then afterwards just like that just gets anything that's left in the bristles 
Uh, now, obviously, you don't do it over your work, but... Unfortunately, though, guys, um, thank you for dropping in, but it's it's now 20 past nine, and I've just spent the last 20 minutes, uh, obviously, discussing uh, tips and tricks and, and art materials and things like that. Uh, and haven't done any of this for 20 minutes. <laughs> but I normally stop at about 9 o'clock. But it has been fun talking with you about um, pencils and art forms and things. Uh, absolutely fantastic. It, I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for uh, for dropping in. Uh, but I am unfortunately going to need to stop for this evening. Um, I look forward to seeing you again. Uh, that would be fantastic. Feel free to drop in and ask about anything we can talk about. Art uh, medium again, that would be uh, various things. That's It's fun uh, to do. And uh, I will make a note of um, sea turtles uh, and um, ink and markers. Uh, not something I'll pull with inks and markers I'll get into very soon, but uh, maybe the, the turtle and the pyrography. That does sound like an interesting subject to do. Um, I, I'm kind of fascinated by the undersea just because once I, I did once go scuba diving and seeing a fish come past the face mask with no visible support because you can't see the water when you're under it. Um, I, I've kind of been fascinated by that since then. Yes, thank you, Lebel. Thank you, Jasper, again, both of you for coming in. Um, I don't think there'll be a stream tomorrow night. It's Valentine's Day tomorrow. So I don't think I'll be streaming tomorrow. Um, but um, I should be streaming again on Wednesday. Maybe doing this, or I may be doing the stabby art thing. Um, depends if I can find something to support. Because I'd like to do a rug, a yeah, fairly sizable rug. Uh, and I could do it in my hand and make everybody squeamish on the stream, but. Um, if I can find a frame to do it in. I may be doing that. Or I may. I, I kind of want to finish this just to finish the project and then move on to a stabby art thing. <laughs> but uh, that that will probably be Wednesday. Heat to illustrate washing machine. Yeah, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? Um, it's kind of like how black looks white when you're doing airbrushing or, or when you pyrography sometimes. It's, it's kind of some really ironic things go on in art. Um, yeah, you two have a good uh, a good time in enjoy the Minecraft um, and uh, and the rest of your uh, evening and, and rest of the week. Thank you very much for dropping. Hope I'll see you on the next stream. Um, if anybody's watching uh, wants to know when that is, obviously I'll say follow me here, but um, you can also follow me on Twitter because I, I was about to say I tweet when I go live. I forgot tonight. Oh dear. Ah, it's been one of those days. Exciting things happening which I can't say anything about because I don't want to uh, uh, jinx it, as I say. Uh, but the next stream then, we are on Tuesday today, so the next stream is going to be Wednesday. I'll skip Valentine's Day, I think. Uh, and that will be about 7 p.m. UK time. That's GMT or UTC. And we'll go on for about two hours. Have a great time, everybody. Bye for now.